Chang from National Taiwan University, uh, who will uh, speak on hypergeometric functions as modular forms on Shimura curves. So it's a pleasure to have you, Professor Yifan Yang. Uh, sorry about all these uh, difficulties of joining on Zoom. Uh, in fact, uh, a few weeks ago, I also had some difficulty. So once in a while it happens and somehow the difficulties happen. Go good, so please go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. The lecture is one hour, is it not? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so I still have one hour, right? <laughs> yes, one hour, one hour. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, uh, I didn't use Zoom very often. Um, okay, so, okay, so, uh, so today I, uh, I'm I've got to thank you for the invitation to give the talk here and uh, thanks for the introduction. Okay, so uh, so maybe let me start from the definition of a hypergeometric function. Uh, I think most people probably know this, but uh, let me still give you the uh, decoder definition here. So to define a hypergeometric function, we need the three parameters, A, B, C, C, and we suppose that the C is not a zero or a negative integer. Then the hypergeometric function to F1 is defined to, by this uh, uh, power series, uh, A sub n, B sub n over C sub n, n factorial times Z raised to n. Here A sub n is the ascending factorial, uh, which is uh, A times A plus one up to A plus n minus one, totally n terms. And uh, this is also called the Pohama symbol. Um, okay, and uh, the hypergeometric function is a solution of the uh, hypergeometric uh, differential equation uh, given here. The theta denotes the differential operator z, d over dz. And, uh, and the main thing of this talk is that the uh, under suitable settings, uh, we can regard the hypergeometric functions as a uh, module form uh, Shimura curves. And uh, this will give us some uh, interesting formulas uh, for hypergeometric functions. So for example, uh, we can uh, use uh, the theory of Shimura curve to prove, uh, to obtain this uh, evaluation, uh, the two F1 with parameters one over 24, seven over 24, five over six and the uh, evaluate at this rational number and then we get this algebraic uh, number. And uh, this identity actually come from the Hick eigenvalues of some Hick eigenform on Schumer curve. I will explain this uh, later on. And, uh, and uh, also, uh, of course, uh, people in India should be familiar with this type of series, a uh, Ramanujan type of series. So, uh, the Ramanujan type series, the standard form is the, uh, this whole, oops, nah. how do I write on this? Uh, let me see. Uh, nah. uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know how to use this. So uh, I, I, I'm hoping to write something on, on this PDF, but somehow I couldn't figure out how to, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So the, we will see the, the standard Ramanujan type of, uh, series and that's for one over pi. Yeah, and I'm, I uh, was trying to write down the formula here, but I just couldn't. But we will see the formula later, uh, the so-called Ramanujan type series for one over pi. So th this is actually an analog for the, uh, uh, in the setting of Schumacher curve. So, so in the Ramanujan pi series, we get uh, this kind of hypergeometric series and uh, the evaluation uh, is a, a certain uh, algebraic multiple of one over pi. So here, instead of pi, we have a, this gamma product, gamma three quarter over gamma one quarter square. And the, so the, the, this uh, uh, difference is that uh, here we have a uh, this uh, gamma product should be uh, thought of as periods of for CM elliptic curve. Uh, I, actually, the reciprocal. And we, we will uh, see the formula or the meaning of this uh, uh, later on. And uh, also, uh, we can use the uh, Schumacher curve and uh, together with the method of Bull transform. About 
uh, to get uh, this kind of uh, evaluation. So we have two F1 evaluate at the ratio number equal to this algebraic number times the ratio of two, in the so-called Chona Seerberg curious. Okay, uh, and also this three F2 evaluate at this ratio number equal to this uh, uh, rational multiple with omega minus 43 square. So, uh, uh, so here the Chona Seerberg uh, periods is defined by this uh, Prada, uh, gamma Prada, and uh, here the, the D is a, a fundamental, negative fundamental discriminant, and the uh, chi D is the uh, connect symbol corresponding to, to the number of a Q root D, and the mu D is the uh, number of root unity, the Q root D, and the H D is the cast number. And so, uh, but unfortunately, because of this, uh, uh, Evaluation uses the bullshit form, and we don't have uh, time or to discuss this, so we will not uh, talk about this uh, later. Um, okay, and uh, also we can use the habit, the, this idea. I mean, using uh, regarding uh, regarding hypergeometric function as a module form uh, schmal curve, we can uh, prove this kind of uh, algebraic. Uh, transform, transformation for hypergeometric function. And uh, we will uh, also uh, explain the meaning of this identity in terms of module form uh, Schumacher curve. Okay, so, uh, so, to, uh, to, uh, so let me uh, in, uh, define what a Schumacher curve is. Uh, so to define a Schumacher curve, we need a quartet algebra. I think the in the previous talk, um, this, uh, Professor Parker probably have uh, uh, introduced quaternion algebra, so we'll uh, skip uh, uh, this, this slide. Uh, I hope it's okay. And uh, okay, so I, I was skipping this, this uh, uh, slide about quaternion definition of quaternion algebra. Okay, so to um, so now suppose we have a quaternion algebra over a number of field k, and uh, we suppose that r is the ring of integers in K, then uh, we need to mention some definition or property of a uh, quaternion algebra. So, so we let B be a, a place of K and uh, BV be the completion of this quaternion algebra at B. And uh, there are two possibilities. One is that uh, the, this completion BV is actually uh, isomorphic to the matrix algebra M2 KV. Here KV is the uh, completion of K at the place B. And uh, so in this case, we have a zero divisors. And, uh, and uh, the other possibility is that the B, BB is actually a division algebra. And uh, in the first case, we say B uh, splits at B. And uh, in the second case, we say uh, the, this quaternion algebra B uh, ramifies at uh, the place B. Okay, and uh, okay, I, I think uh, probably in the previous talk, uh, the speaker has mentioned that the the number of ramified places is, is finite and uh, actually an even integer, and uh, and the, the product of ramified places is the is called the discriminant of, of the uh, quaternion algebra, and uh, in the, in the case of k is the uh, field of rational numbers q, then because uh, there is only one infinite place, so usually people just define the disc discriminant to be the product of ramified finite places. So it's just a product of prime numbers. And uh, to to define a Schumer curve, we need uh, an order in the quartine algebra b. So an order o is the uh, uh, defined to be a finitely generated R module. Here R is the ring of integers in K. And uh, uh, such that uh, O is also a ring with the identity. See? Uh, I, I said, uh, I, I wrote the unity here, but a ring with identity and uh, containing a basis of B over K. And uh, so in this talk, we will uh, also use a, a notion of maximal, just, uh, just a definition. We say an order is maximal if it's uh, not properly contained in another order. And uh, we also have the uh, definition of an I hit the, I hit the order. So this is uh, by, def definition, by definition, this is just the intersection of two maximum orders. 
Okay, so now we have a uh, quantine algebra and uh, we also have orders. Now we can define Shimura curve. And so to define Shimura curve, we need the number field to be a totally real number field. So uh, we assume K is totally real. And, uh, and uh, we assume that this uh, quaternion algebra B split, uh, uh, I, I should say, among all the infinite places, places B split exactly one of them. Okay, uh, this uh, sentence is probably a little misleading, we, which I, I should say, among all the infinite places, uh, B split exactly at one of them. So, so it splits at other places, the final places, but only one at, uh, at one of, only one of the infinity places. So, so under this uh, condition, up to conjugation, there's a unique invading uh, iota, let's call iota from B into M2R. Now, uh, now let's take an order O of B, then consider the uh, non one element in O. Uh, Okay, I think uh, in the previous talk, uh, the speaker part should have uh, defined the norm, the definition of norm. This is just, norm just means the gamma times the conjugate of gamma, quaternionic conjugate. Okay, so now we consider uh, uh, the image of this non one group under this uh, iota, this uh, unique invading up to conjugation. So then the non one condition just means the Determinant of this uh, determinant of elements in, in this group uh, have R one. So in other words, this uh, this uh, group is contained in S or two R. Okay. So now the now this is a subgroup uh, contain a uh, uh, subgroup of, of S S or two R. So so this group acts on the upper half plane, uh, and then the quotient space H quotient by this gamma O is what we call a Schumacher curve. Associated to O, and, uh, and uh, in the case B is M two Q, we also uh, this uh, X O is not a compact, is not compact, so we need to add some cusp to make this uh, X O compact. But but if uh, B is not M two Q, then this uh, uh, quotient space is always compact, so we don't need to add any cusp uh, at all. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, definition of a Schumacher curve. Okay, so. Uh, uh, to uh, to make a connection to the hypergeometric hyper function, we uh, need to uh, introduce some notion uh, uh, about Schumacher curves. So, so just like a classical module curve, we have the so-called parabolic element in, in SL2Z. So here, uh, similarly, we say an element in this gamma O is parabolic if the trace of a gamma is uh, plus or minus two. Then in this case, uh, the the fixed point of this gamma is a a, a real number or infinity, and uh, we say uh, this uh, uh, this gamma is a cusp. And uh, associated to this uh, uh, cusp, we have we we uh, we associate this infinity to this uh, cusp. And um, and uh, also uh, also if the trace of this gamma. Uh, the absolute value of trace gamma is less than two. Then, then this, uh, 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 then, uh, then this uh, gamma has a unique fixed point in the upper half plane, and uh, we call this uh, gamma. Uh, this is uh, a fixed point, the ED point of the Schumacher curve. And and uh, to this ED curve, we associate a number e, which is the uh, size of the stabilizer subgroup uh, gamma tau uh, quotient by plus and minus one. So th this is the order of the elliptic point. Now the now XO is a compact Riemann surface, so we have uh, the so-called genus. Then the sig signature of this uh, Schumacher curve is uh, this uh, tuple of integers g and the uh, e1, e2 up to er, where the uh, e1, e up to er denotes the uh, all in equivalent cusps and the uh, e. I mean the, the numbers e corresponding to the all in equivalent cusps and the uh, e liberty points. Okay, so, um, so in the previous talk, I, I mean, you know, in the in the preceding talk by Professor Parker, I, I think they uh, he mentioned the so-called triangle group. So this corresponds to the case where the genus is zero and then the number of 
cusps and uh, elite points are three, exactly three. So we, so in other words, the signature is zero, E1, E2, E3. In this case, uh, this is how we call arithmetic uh, triangle group. Okay, so now, uh, now let me uh, give some example of Schumacher curve. So in the first example, we we need the quaternion algebra uh, be the matrix algebra over Q, M2, Q, then we choose all uh, to be M to Z, and then we can check that uh, this is the uh, maximum order. And uh, now the gamma O in this case, uh, remember that the, um, the no one element, the no one condition here just means that the determinant is one. So this gamma O is just S to Z. Then, uh, then the S O is the classical module curve X zero one, and uh, the signature is a zero, two, three, infinity. So genus is a zero and the one cusp and the one EB point O of order two and the one input point of order three. And the, and the, the second example, we, uh, we did B, B, M, 2, Q again. And uh, now the, we choose all B, this is order Z, Z, N, Z, Z. Uh, this is uh, how we say, um, we call an actual order we mentioned earlier. This, so this is all is actually at the intersection, uh, intersection of two mass order, one is uh, this uh, M2Z and uh, the other one, unfortunately, I, I don't know how to write on this slide. So, so we, we can check that this uh, is the uh, intersection of two mass order. And uh, so this is an uh, eigen order. And in this case, again, the uh, normal condition just means the determinant is one. So gamma O is the, the how we uh, denote by gamma zero and the congruent subgroup gamma zero N. And uh, this, uh, in this case, the the Schumacher curve is just the uh, usual module curve x zero n. Okay, so we have seen two examples that come from a uh, class, classical module curve. Now let me uh, give one example, which is uh, it's not uh, the classical module curve. So here we we let b be the quaternion algebra minus one three over q, and uh, so this means that uh, B is spanned by one IG and IG and the uh, I squared is minus one G squared is three and IG equal to minus GI. And uh, now, now this, uh, uh, of course, it, this uh, needs to some uh, background about quaternion algebra, but in any, any case, we can show that uh, the, this quaternion algebra runs fast at two and three. And uh, also, uh, suppose we let O be the, Z module spanned by one ij and uh, this number one plus i plus j plus ij divided by two, then this is a maximum order. Now we can uh, embed this uh, uh, b into m two r just by sending i to zero minus one one zero j to this matrix. So we can check that uh, this matrix square zero minus one one zero square is minus one and the j square is uh, three. And so on. So, so this is indeed an embedding. Um, and then in this case, the Schumacher curve has a signature 0, 2, 2, 3, 3, and the genus 0, and the 2 elliptic point order 2, and the 2 elliptic point order 3. Okay, so uh, to explain the, the identity, we mentioned earlier, we also need to mention the definition of CM points on Schumacher curve. So here, uh, for simplicity, we assume k is a uh, is q, and uh, so and we assume uh, we we need b be the discriminant of the quantum algebra b. Now, uh, it's a, a property of quantum algebra that uh, uh, in order for a quadratic number field L to be embeddable into B, the sufficient necessary and the sufficient condition is that the connect symbol uh, L over P. So, uh, so, this, uh, oops. So, this, so this symbol means the uh, connect symbol. So the necessary and the sufficient condition for L to be embeddable into B is that uh, this connect symbol L over P is not one for any kind of value of the discriminant. Now, suppose, um, now suppose uh, AO can be embedded into B, uh, say phi is an embedding. Now we can show that the intersection of this phi O with an order O in B uh, is equal to some, uh, the image of some order of AO on the phi. 
Okay, so we have a, a for some R, uh, which is an order in R, such that the phi or uh, the intersection of phi or and the O is uh, equal to phi R. And, and in such a case, we say phi is an optimal embedding uh, relative to uh, O and R. Here, O is the order in the quartet algebra, and R is the order in AO. Then, then the discriminant of this uh, optimal embedding is defined to be the uh, this uh, uh, dis the discriminant of this uh, quadratic order R. Okay, so now suppose uh, uh, the this quadratic order, uh, the discriminant of this quadratic order is negative. So so this means that L is an imaginary quadratic number field. Then there's a unique fixed point of this uh, iota phi R. So uh, phi map R into B and the iota map B into uh, M2R. So this uh, is an element in M2R. Now we can, uh, in now suppose uh, the discriminant of R is negative, and then there's a unique fixed point of this, uh, 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 this order on, on H in, in the upper half plane. We, and uh, this point is called a CM point of discriminant D. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of CM. Now, now we have seen that the Schumer curve generates the notion of module curves. So, 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 uh, and on the Schumer curve, we can similarly define module forms. So the definition is, is a completed uh, parallel to the definition of a classical module form. So we say a holomorphic function if defined on the upper half plane is a module form where k and gamma o if uh, if set this by this uh, uh, transformation formula for all A, B, C, D in gamma O. And, and uh, uh, of course, the uh, module form form a uh, vector space over C, and uh, we denote the space by this uh, SKO. Suppose the weight is K, then we uh, denote the space by SKO. And the module function uh, is defined similarly. We suppose F is meromorphic and uh, the weight is zero, then we say F is a module function on uh, gamma O. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, B, uh, the quartet algebra is M2Q, we also need some analytic condi conditions on cuspers. Uh, here we, uh, we are mainly concerned with the non, uh, concerned with the curve that are not uh, classical module curve. And, and uh, similar to classical module forms, we can also define HIC operators. So again, we, uh, for, simpli for simplicity, we assume k is q. Then, then we can uh, suppose we have an order. Uh, I hear the order of a label n, uh, which we denote by O d n, and the d is the discriminant of the quantum algebra. And the, and here in in this case, uh, the label n can be just defined to be the index of the I hear order in in the maximum orders. So, uh, I hear order is the intersection of two maximum orders, so the label can be defined. Just to be the index of this order in the in any of the two mass orders. Okay, so so uh, in this case we uh, we usually just use x zero d and denote the Schumacher curve. Uh, okay, maybe some people put d in the in, in the superscript, not, not here. But okay, so so to define Hick operator, the definition is uh, uh, similar to a classical module curve. So uh, suppose p is a prime number, and uh, uh, here we assume p is, uh, does not divide dn. Then we pick an element of non p in the in this accurate order. Then we consider uh, iota alpha, which is an element of discriminant p in m two r, and uh, we uh, multiply uh, this element by gamma o on the two sides. Then consider the order. Uh, uh, corset, a uh, record set under the action of gamma O. And uh, now we can define the uh, Hick operator just uh, as, the, uh, as in the case of classical module curve. So, so if TP will, uh, if will be equal to uh, this sum, we later order take the corset representative gamma and the X on uh, F, and then sum over this uh, 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 order corset representative. And, and uh, this uh, again will be a, a module form on the Schumacher curve. And, uh, and uh, because the, uh, on the Schumacher curve, we can also define uh, Peterson inner 
product and also uh, these heat converters are commute with each other and uh, are self adjoint. So, so, so again, the space of module form consists of, uh, has a basis that consists of simultaneous eigenform for all uh, heat operators. And, uh, and so in terms of uh, arithmetic, the uh, Schumer curves and the module curve are very similar in the sense that the, uh, the jacket non non correspondence says that uh, the Hick eigenforms on, uh, on the Schumer curve on, uh, Schumer curve actually have the same Hick eigenvalues for for some Hick eigenforms on the classical module curve. Okay, so uh, so so in terms of uh, arithmetic, uh, Schumer curves and the module curve are very similar. So so that's a uh, that's a, a result of jacket and the London the Hick eigenform share the same Hick eigenvalues as some. Uh, Hecke eigenform on classical module curves. Okay, so so we have seen that the uh, uh, Schumer curve generates a uh, module curve, and uh, we have also seen that uh, we have a notion of uh, Hecke operators and so on. But the but the, uh, but the similarities uh, maybe just uh, stop here um, because the, um, in the practical. Uh, sense. I mean, uh, suppose we want to do computation about Schumer, Schumer curve. This, uh, this is much more uh, complicated and uh, difficult than the classical module curve. Uh, so here, uh, let's just explain why uh, the, uh, this happens. The first thing um, about module curve is that the many problems about module form, classical module form, or module curve can be done by, uh, can be, can be solved by computing Q expansions. Okay, so that, that's the classical module curve case. We, uh, for example, suppose we want to compute the defining equation of a module curve, we can just uh, choose two uh, module functions and compute the two expansion and find the uh, variation material. And uh, so, so in the case of um, classical module curve, many problems can be solved by computing the two expansions. But for the Schumer curves, uh, in general, Schumer curves do not have cusps. So, so we don't have two expansions. And so we only have a tether expansion at the uh, points, but, but it's not easy to compute the tether coefficient of module form or module function for Schumacher curve. So uh, this is one major difference for um, classical module curve. We have two expansions and, and uh, usually they are easy to compute. And uh, another difference is that uh, the, in a classical module form sense uh, case, uh, there are many methods to construct, construct module form and the module functions. For example, we have Eisenstein series, data series, data uh, eta function, and so on. But the, the but in the case of Schumacher, uh, uh, there are very few uh, explicit methods to construct module form and the functions. So that's another major difference. And another difference is that for in the classical module form case, um, uh, suppose we, we have a Hecke eigenform, normalized Hecke eigenform, then it's a free coefficient adjust the Hecke eigenvalues. It's actually a very um, significant uh, property because, uh, because in the classical module form case, we there are many other methods to compute the Hecke eigenvalues. For example, we have a method of module symbols or a brand a matrix and so on. So, so to uh, compute the full free coefficient of Hecke eigenforms, we actually only need to compute the Hecke eigenvalues. Yeah, that, uh, because of the, for the classical module curve case, free coefficients are the same as Hecke eigenvalues uh, for the Hecke eigenforms. Normalized Hecke eigenforms. So, so th uh, this is a one, um, how do I say, it? Uh, one important property for classical module form. But, but again, this uh, property doesn't hold for Schumacher curves. So, so we mentioned earlier that the uh, uh, Hecke eigenvalues for Hecke eigenforms on Schumacher curves can be completely using jacket correspondence because they are the same as the uh, Hecke eigenvalues for. Uh, classical module forms, but uh, but uh, even though we know the Hecke eigenvalues, we cannot use Hecke eigenvalues to um, to get the uh, tether co coefficient of uh, 
angio forms are Schumacher. curve. That's another uh, difficulty for uh, Schumacher curves. Okay, so so now uh, then uh, then we come to the main point of this uh, uh, talk. So we so uh, because of the uh, difficulty for Schumacher curve, so we, we need some method to uh, new method to do the computation. So this is, is the idea. Um, okay, uh, this uh, is based on this. Uh, we are known results since the 19th century, uh, which says that uh, if we have a module form of where k and uh, a non-constant module function t, then uh, if tau f up to tau raised to kf as uh, functions of t satisfy a uh, k plus first order linear ordinary differential equation. And then the main point is that uh, the coefficients are algebraic functions of t uh, that, that's the main point of this uh, theorem. Okay, so so in the uh, so he, so here are two uh, well-known examples. The first uh, example. Can I just ask you? Uh, can I interrupt? Uh, what is uh, oh, yeah, t yeah, and sorry. tau? What are these t and tau? Uh, tau is a variable. Uh, tau is a, uh, the variable in the upper half plane. Mm -hmm. And t. Uh, 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 t t is a, a non-constant module function, and the uh, f is a module form, and the and the theta is a t d over dt. So so the differential operator is with respect to t, not the tau, but the t. So mm -hmm. so here we, we should regard this. What is uh, called the Ramanujan uh, theta operator? Uh, that is q d by d q. Uh, it, it's a it's different because uh, uh, it, it's different because uh, Q is just a Q is a uh, you know for major at the cusp, but the T here is actually a, a module function. So, 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 so Q is D by DT mean a T D by DT means uh, 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 you have to use somehow D tau uh, by DT and uh, D by D tau. Yeah, 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 yes. So, so, so d d over dt just means a differentiation with respect to t, then times t. But t is not a variable; it is a modular function. Yeah, but, but okay. So t is a module function. So we have a, a function, a module function. So, so it's a tau to t, right? So function t is a, a from tau to t. But, the, but if uh, local, if, if this uh, is locally one to one, then we can take the inverse function, right? Mm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so it's based for the uh, ED point of cusp, we can always take the inverse function locally. Okay. But of course, uh, because in general, uh, locally is not one to one. So, so, uh, so in general, uh, tau as a function t just uh, is only a multi value function, not, not a exactly a single well defined function. So he, that's why I say multi-value function of T. Mm -hmm. These are not modular it, forms. It, okay. Only okay. F is a modular form and the other ones are not modular forms. Uh, F is a modular form it? and the tau is a very... What uh, is sorry? tau F? What kind of object is tau F? Tau f. Oh, tau, I'm sorry. Uh, tau just uh, tau times f. I'm sorry. So it's f of tau and tau times f of tau, and so on. It's not a modular form. So so, so uh, No no no. It, it's a modular form times a uh, tau. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so, uh, so uh, in any case, uh, let's just summarize uh, this uh, theorem again. So, so basically, this just means uh, uh, suppose we have module form where k, then this uh, module form where k will satisfy a k plus first order linear order, ordinary differential equation, but the, the variable will be uh, t here, not, not the top of t. Okay, so that, that so now let's take uh, these uh, uh, two famous examples. The first one is uh, uh, this uh, E4 tau, E4 is the Eisenstein of wave four. And uh, 
So th this is a very classical identity. We said E4 tau is equal to 2F1, 1 over 12, 9 over 12, 1, and uh, 1,728 over J tau. And so, so, so this uh, 1, 1,728 over J is a T in the theorem. And uh, the E4 is a weight for Einstein series. Now, uh, this identity uh, uh, says that E4 equal to this 2F1 uh, raised to 4. But 2F1 uh, satisfy a, a second order differential equation. Then suppose we raise this uh, 2F1 to the fourth power, then this function will satisfy a fifth order differential equation. So, so this uh, example says that uh, the weight for module form E4 satisfy a, a fifth order linear differential equation. Okay, 2F1 set, uh, is a solution of second order, but we take the fourth power. So this is a, uh, so the right, right hand side is a, a solution of some fifth order differential equation. So with four module form and the fifth order differential equation. Okay. Uh, another famous example from uh, 19th century. So theta function, uh, the Jacobi theta function. So theta function is a weight one half module form. So theta three squared is a weight one module form. Now the, so, so this identity says that the, the weight one module form uh, satisfy a second order differential equation uh, because two F one is a solution of some uh, uh, second order differential equation. Now, so, so here again, theta two to the fourth power divided by theta three to the fourth power is a module function, right? Because uh, they are both, they are two and they are three are both module form with one half. So this is the, the argument here is a, a module function. So, so in other words, uh, another, another way to say this is that uh, suppose we expand the module form with one in terms of the uh, module function, then, then this is a series will uh, satisfy a second order differential equation. Okay, so so the, uh, so our uh, method for Schumacher uh, is based on this uh, observation or, or the well-known result from the 19th century. Okay, now suppose t is a module function, then uh, it's uh, uh, very easy to see that uh, the t prime will be a meromorphic module from where to. Okay, so so ac according to the uh, result we we mentioned earlier. So t prime is weight two. So suppose we raise t prime raise, uh, to k over two, then this uh, t prime raised to k over two is a uh, weight k meromorphic module. So according to the theorem, the function of t, uh, this uh, satisfies a k plus plus order uh, linear ordinary differential equation. Okay, so. Uh, so this, this uh, uh, differential equation actually take uh, uh, this from uh, the last uh, the the last time here. So uh, so in general we can convert the uh, say we have a with one module form f and a, a module function t, then it satisfies certain di di second order differential equation. Then then we can prove that the, the then the t prime to one half will satisfy this uh, differential equation. Uh, some kind Somehow normalized, uh, some kind of norm normalization. So, so G, the uh, twice the uh, derivative of G is equal to Q T times G, where Q T is given by uh, this expression. Suppose we have uh, already already known that the uh, this uh, second order differential equations come from module form wave one. Then we can use this uh, to uh, deduce that the T prime uh, square root of T prime satisfy this. Uh, uh, differential equation second order where QT is uh, has a this expression. Now the now this QT uh, actually we can show that uh, this QT is the, uh, has this property. So two QT times uh, dt over d tau square is equal to a uh, plus uh, curly bracket t tau equal to zero. Here curly bracket t tau is given by this uh, uh, formula, and uh, this is actually uh, the so-called uh, Schwarzian derivative of t, and uh, and then we can 
uh, by uh, brute force computation, we can show that uh, this uh, uh, Schwarzen derivative is a module form, a meromorphic module form wave form. So, so, so t, curly bracket t tau is a wave form module form, and the t dt over t tau uh, is a wave two module form. So we can see that qt is a module function. Okay, so so q in other words, we can uh, uh, write qt as a algebraic function of t. Okay, now now because uh, this connection to Schwarzian uh, derivative, we call uh, the we call this differential equation the Schwarzian differential equation associated to t. Uh, that's uh, uh, because of this uh, connection to Schwarzian uh, derivative. So that's why we call this uh, Schwarzian differential equation associated to t. Now the uh, now the key point here is that uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, Schumann curve correspond to an arithmetic triangle group, so genus zero and only three uh, elliptic points. Then, then uh, I, I didn't mention uh, earlier, but in general, this, uh, this kind of uh, differential equation, the singularity of this uh, kind of differential equation only have um, a singularity at the points where the, uh, how do I say this? Uh, where if fail to be single value function, right? Okay. Suppose we, we, uh, uh, let, let me uh, repeat again. So, so t and f are function of tau, but now we take the inverse function. So tau as a function of t, uh, yeah, tau as a function of t, not, uh, and then we have a f as a function of t. Then suppose the, this uh, uh, composition from t to f is a one-to-one -one locally, then uh, this, uh, Differential equation, uh, the differential equation will not have similarity at uh, this kind of point. Suppose the local is one to one, then then this uh, differential equation will not have similarity. But 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 uh, on the other on the other hand, if tau uh, two t is locally many to one, then we don't have, we don't have well defined inverse function. Then then this differential equation will have similarity at uh, this kind of point. So so in other words. Uh, now suppose we suppose we have a triangle group, and uh, suppose t tau is a half module for this triangle group. Then, then uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, then this uh, Schwarzian uh, differential equation for t will have a singularity only at the three elliptic points. In other words, only three singularities. Now, now we have uh, this differential equation is a fusion and uh, with only three singularities. So. So the uh, from uh, a theory of compass ODE, we know that uh, this kind of differential equation is always hypergeometric, or up to algebraic transformation, this will be hypergeometric. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I, I, I forgot to mention this. That's I'm sorry. So so we we haven't come to the triangle group yet. So. So I'm sorry. So here we assume a Schumann curve has genus zero and the signature zero e one up to e r. Then, then, uh, then we can uh, suppose t tau is a half module for the Schumann curve. Then we can analyze the local behavior of this t tau and the, the uh, local uh, behavior of t prime tau. Then we can show that the suppose t. Uh, now th uh, let's take it. A look at the, uh, the button name here. So T prime is a wave two module form. Okay, so T prime to K over two is a wave K module form, a uh, meromorphic. But we can um, analyze the local be behavior and show that the T prime tau raised to K over two times this product. Okay, uh, the product is T tau minus A AI, where AI is the value of T at the tau I. Then we can um, raise T tau minus a i to this uh, integer, then we can show that uh, this uh, t prime tau raised to k over two, this is the meromorphic with, with k module form, and then we multiply uh, the t prime tau to k over two by this product, then this will be holomorphic, okay, for uh, throughout the upper half plane. So this is, will be uh, holomorphic module form. Now we can further multiply this product by a suitable power of t, here the j can be any integer from zero to the dimension minus one. Uh, here dk is the dimension of this uh, space 
uh, or module from WebK on the schema curve. And then we, we can show that uh, all these uh, products are holomorphic module form. Okay, so, okay, so, so in summary, okay, so we have seen that the, uh, here, Okay, so here we, we, we have seen that the T prime, uh, square root of T prime will satisfy a, certain, a second order differential equation, uh, what we call Schwarzian different, uh, differential equation for T. Now, on the other hand, we can, we see that the, uh, every module form, holomorphic module form can be written as a T prime to K over two times uh, a product, uh, this kind of product factor and uh, times the suitable power of T. So in other words, uh, t, t, uh, here t prime, square root of t prime can be written as a solution with some second order differential equation. And then the others are just uh, power of t and a uh, uh, rational function of t. So, so in other words, so combining the two uh, results together, we, say, we see that uh, uh, suppose f1 and f2 uh, form a basis for the Schwarzian differential equation, uh, a basis of solution for the Schwarzian differential equation, then we can, then, then uh, there exists a constant C1, C2, which is a T prime, such as C1, F1 plus C2, F2 is a T prime, a square root of T prime. So this uh, uh, is a square root of T prime. And now, now the rest are just the same as the previous step. So, so, in, so basically this uh, corollary says that uh, every module form can be, written as a solution in terms of solution with Schwarzian differential equation times a suitable rational function of t. Okay, so that, that, that's the, uh, uh, what the, this corollary says. Okay, now let's uh, look at the, the uh, case of triangle group. So we, we mentioned earlier that the, in the case of triangle group and the t is a half module, the, the differential equation, the Schwarzian differential equation has only three singularities. So, so this uh, differential equation must uh, uh, must uh, um, be algebraic algebraic transformation of some hypergeometric function. So suppose we we work out all the details, then we can see that the uh, suppose the, uh, the signature is zero, e one, e two, e three. Then then every module form on this schema curve can be uh, expressed in terms of uh, hypergeometric function two f one a b c t and uh, plus some constant times uh, this. Uh, another 2f1. And here the, the parameters a, b, c, and a prime, b prime, c prime uh, can be worked out as a, uh, here. Okay, so, uh, so th this is the main thing we, uh, we mentioned in the, uh, in the beginning of the talk. So, so suppose, in, in summary, suppose the schema curve come from a triangle group, then every module form on this schema curve can be written in terms of hypergeometric function. So that, that's the main result here. Okay, so here is one example. Okay, so this, this uh, quantum algebra uh, is the one we uh, gave earlier. So B is a mass one, three over Q, and uh, this is, is a quantum algebra over Q with the discriminant six, and uh, let's take uh, all be the maximum order mentioned earlier, uh, which is the Z module spanned by one IJ and the one plus I plus J plus IJ over two. Now, uh, I didn't define Akinenda evolution, but, but for Schumacher curve, we, can, we also have the notion with Akinenda evolutions. Now we take uh, this Schumacher curve XO associated to this maximum order, then we take the, the quotient by all the Akinenda evolution, then we can check that uh, this uh, Schumacher curve has a signature zero, two, four, six. Okay, now, now, now apply uh, this uh, result, uh, this, this theorem, we can see that the, uh, the unique with 12 module form can be uh, expressed uh, by this, uh, uh, this by this uh, hypergeometric function, 2f1, 1 over 24, 7 over 24, and so on. Okay, so uh, so this, uh, um, yeah, the, this uh, with 12 space of where 12 module form has a one dimension, so so it must be a multiple of this uh, uh, function. 
Okay. Uh, of, of course, uh, this expression is, is only local because uh, in order for this to have one to, uh, to converge, we need uh, the absolute value of t to be less than one and so on. So, uh, so, this, so this expression is only local. Okay, so, so now, uh, so now we, let, let me uh, use this uh, uh, fact f tau equal to this uh, hypergeometric function. We can uh, do some computation to uh, obtain the, the evaluation, uh, the first evaluation mentioned in the beginning of the talk. So, so, uh, so this is, is a schema curve. Then we can, we mentioned earlier the, the Hick eigenform has the same Hick eigenvalue as some classical module form. So, so here, um, uh, I omitted the details, but in any case, we can show that the, for the T5 Hick operator, the Hick eigenvalue is 3,630. Okay, so, so you got the uh, T5 F equal to uh, 3,630 F. Now we uh, use this uh, uh, expression for F. Okay, now we evaluate the uh, ED point of, of order six. Yeah, uh, here the ED point of order six corresponds to the uh, T equal to zero. So T is a homogeneous that has a value zero at the ED point of order six. Okay, so so uh, T, So now we evaluate the identity in the two side at the tau zero. Uh, now because T, at the tau zero t is equal to zero, and the, the hypergeometric function embedded at the zero is just uh, one. Okay, so we have a tf t five f embedded at the tau zero equal to three thousand six uh, six hundred thirty, and uh, on the other hand, uh, we just uh, uh, by definition of a Hick operator, we can show that the uh, tf t five f of tau zero is equal to uh, the value of this module form at the same point of this screen the minus 75, then ju uh, just uh, uh, write down everything. So we just choose the uh, Corsair representative and uh, write down all the ABCD and uh, compute the, uh, the, uh, this factor. Then we can uh, just uh, deduce that the, uh, the value of this uh, F. Uh, okay, so. I mean, uh, the details are just uh, some tedious, tedious computation. So but at, the, at the end, we will get that, that the 2F1, uh, uh, I mean, this 2F1 evaluate at this rational number is equal to this algebraic number. So so, there's, so that's, uh, like I said, at, at the beginning, this evaluation actually come from the, the fact that, that the Hick eigenform, the Hick eigenvalue T5 for T5, uh, for the space of weight 12 module form on Schema curve is equal to 3,630. That's a, uh, how we get this evaluation. Okay, and similarly, we can uh, use the T7 Hick operator. Then we uh, find that the 2F1 evaluator at this rational number is equal to this algebra number. Okay. So, uh, for the Ramanujan type series, okay, th this is the uh, classical one. So we have uh, this uh, uh, sum of six uh, n plus one times one over two sub n uh, raised to three divided by n factorial raised to three. Evaluate at, at this uh, number, rational number, then this will be equal to four over pi. And uh, so Ramanujan find, uh, found um, uh, 17 of this kind of, uh, series and uh, also uh, this is a more um, uh, how do I say uh, uh, another famous one by uh, due to Chotunovsky and uh, uh, they show that the uh, this uh, series will converge to this uh, multiple of pi and uh, some people actually use this uh, series to compute the digits of pi. Now uh, I think uh, uh, there are probably many methods to compute, uh, to prove this kind of identity. And uh, some people use module phone. Now suppose we follow the argument, suppose we use module phone to prove this kind of identity, then we can uh, follow the argument and, uh, and uh, just uh, follow the argument but apply to the Schumacher curve case, then we can deduce the uh, similar uh, series. But this time, the, 
the limit is not one over pi, but the sum, uh, but the, the reciprocal of some uh, periods of a CM elliptical uh, given here. C, here C is, uh, here, here gamma two over three over gamma one third is actually the period, periods of the CM, CM elliptic curve by Q root minus three. So, so, uh, so here the, the series converges to this kind of uh, C, not pi, okay. Okay, now uh, let me uh, just, uh, in the next four minutes, five minutes, I, let me just explain how we get uh, the algebra uh, the transformation using, uh, by interpret, interpreting hypergeometric function as a module from a Schumacher curve. So here uh, are some classical uh, result identities. For example, uh, the first one was due to all the uh, 2F1 ABCD is equal to this uh, one, minus, one minus Z raised to minus a times this two F one. Okay, uh, there are many. Probably I don't. I forgot how many. Maybe twenty four or seventy two such a deep, uh, formulas. And uh, so, and uh, Kuma also found the many uh, uh, formulas. Uh, this is one of them. So two F one, two A two B A plus B plus one half uh, Z is equal to this 2F1 AB and uh, the parameters here is A plus B plus one half. And, uh, but uh, here, the, uh, this is it's not Z, but four uh, Z times one over Z. Okay, uh, here are some other examples uh, due to Gulsa and, uh, and the Vidunas. Okay, this is, is more complicated. Yeah, the, 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 this was found only uh, uh, in 2009, that, that's because we, we, of course, we need some computer to do this kind of computation. That's why pe people in the 19th century cannot find this uh, uh, transformation. Okay, so so here, uh, let, let me use uh, uh, the, this idea uh, using Schumacher to prove this kind of algebraic transformation for hypergeometric function. Uh, so this is one of the examples. Okay, so. Um, so the, the idea of proving, proving this kind of identity is, is the, as follows. Okay, so so suppose we have two Schumacher, uh, say two uh, groups gamma O1 and gamma 2, and then we suppose that they are commensurable. So in other words, coming from the same quaternion, quaternion algebra. Okay, so now the... Uh, Key idea is is that uh, suppose we have module function non-constant module function z one on the first group gamma o one and the z two another non-constant module function on gamma o two then because gamma o one and the gamma o two are commensurable z one and z two are algebraic function of each other so that that's the uh, uh, first property and then and then by also Suppose we have a module form on gamma O1 and another module form on gamma O2, but the, with the same weight, then the, the ratio will be a uh, will be a module function on uh, some uh, groups, and the, but then because they are commensurable, so this ratio must be algebraic function of uh, Z1 or Z2. So then that's another uh, key property here. Okay, so in particular. Uh, suppose uh, one group is contained in another group, say gamma O1 is contained in gamma O2, and uh, suppose that uh, they are both triangle groups, and uh, suppose that Z1 is a half module, uh, uh, here by half module I mean the generator of the function fields, say Z1 generated the function field on, on X01, uh, then because Z2, suppose Z2 is a module function on gamma O2, because gamma O2 contains gamma O1, so Z2 is also a module function on gamma O1. So, and then because Z1 is a half module, Z2 must be a rational function of Z1. And uh, also, now, now we call that uh, we can regard certain hypergeometric function as a module form on the triangle groups. So, so uh, now let's take the ratio of two hypergeometric function, a suitable hypergeometric function, then this will be uh, attribute function of Z1 and Z2. Okay, so so this is uh, basically explain the, uh, uh, for example, uh, Vidunas identity. Uh, for example, this one. 
Okay, so this corresponds to the case where uh, one group is contained in another group. So now, now we can generalize this idea uh, as follows. Uh, here we suppose gamma O1 does not contain in gamma O2 or gamma uh, and the gamma auto is not contained in gamma one, but uh, suppose, but suppose that the, the intersection is a group of zero, genus zero. But then again, we can uh, express a uh, module form on this intersection, the group uh, module form on this intersection uh, as a, uh, how do I say the, uh, I, I shouldn't say this way, okay. So, uh, so we have this, uh, intersection of two groups, uh, smaller group, say gamma O3. Uh, now, now module form on gamma O1, of course it's a module form on the smaller group and, uh, and also a module form on gamma O2 is also a module form on smaller group. Okay, so now we, suppose the smaller group has genus zero and uh, has, has a half module X, then, then both Z1 and Z2 can be written as a rational function of X. Okay, and uh, then again, because of, uh, the ratio of two hypergeometric function must be actually a function of X. Okay, so so this uh, so this this is why we have this kind of uh, identity. So so uh, so the left hand side actually correspond to the uh, a two five five triangle group, and then the right hand side the hypergeometric function on the right right hand side correspond to the five ten ten triangle group, and the and if you look at the target which is group uh, list, they are commensurable. And uh, we can show that the intersection is uh, uh, not a triangle group, but a uh, uh, quadrilateral group. So, so four EDV points. And, uh, and uh, you use the, uh, uh, the idea here, we can uh, just uh, show that the, the hypergeometric uh, we know that the hypergeometric function, the ratio of two hypergeometric function will be an actual function of Z1 and Z2 over Z2. And then we just need to uh, work out the uh, details. Uh, for example, we expanded the two side, it is, for example, Z1 equal to zero and so on. Then we can improve the identity. Okay, so so this is the uh, idea behind this uh, uh, algebraic transformation of, of the hypergeometric, hypergeometric function. So I think uh, I, uh, have run out of time, so I think I will stop here. And uh, thank you much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ifan Yang. Uh, beautiful talk, uh, very well given. Uh, let's thank him first. And yeah, thanks. Then, uh, open the floor for any questions. Yo, one thing I want to use for the computations. So, sorry? What kind of programs you use for the computation? You said that the computer is required for some computation. Uh, can you speak a little louder? Uh, because I didn't hear uh, clearly. Uh, so which computation you are talking about? Uh, I'm sorry. It's asking what kind of programs you use for computation. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. There are several computations. Uh, let me say, uh, for example, for uh, okay. But basically, I use use Maple and the Magma. Okay, Maple. Uh, if if the computation is, is easier, I just use Maple because the interface is uh, simpler. And uh, but if the computation is heavier, I use Magma. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a general question that for a quaternion algebra, mm -hmm. uh, how do you dis find out the discriminant from the coefficients? Oh, that, that, that's a good question. Uh, okay, so uh, how to compute the discriminant of quaternion algebra? So, so basically, you uh, uh, okay. Uh, so, so, so there are some uh, basic rules, but it's not always uh, work. It doesn't always work. But for example, for this, uh, 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 let me see where is the, this quaternion algebra. Uh, uh, let me see where is the quaternion algebra. Okay, for example, for this one. Okay, so, so in general, uh, suppose with the quaternion algebra, it's over Q. 
So we have a B of Q. Then, so so basically, uh, there, there's a, a proposition of which says that the only possible possible not not always but possible ramified primes are the prime divisors of this uh, A and B and also possible possibility two. So you only need to consider uh, these primes. Okay. So so he so in this example minus minus one three. So you only need to consider primes two and three. Okay. And so another, uh, okay. So there are some lemmas in quantum algebra. So for example, in this case, because minus one is not a, a square module three. So three is a model, is a, it's a ramified. You, you, you need this kind of uh, property, but it, it's not, it doesn't always work, but, but some, some basic rules can, can uh, mm -hmm. can give you, you the discrimination very quickly. For example, in this case, because uh, minus one is not square root uh, module three, so three is ramified. Okay, so now we only need to consider two and then infinity, but but one of this number is uh, positive, so infinity uh, plays a split. So so this implies that the two must be ramified because the number ramified prime must be even. So three is ramified, but infinity is not. So two must be ramified. So that, that's how we, we know that the, uh, the discriminant is six. So this A and B, the candidate come from A and B only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The possible. And two. And two. Possible things come from yeah, A, two. B, and two. And then yeah, you the prime the value of this A, B and the two and also infinity. That, that's the only possibilities. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then one does calculations with them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Oh, uh, which di uh, division algebra can give rise to genus zero curves? Oh uh, there's a finite list. Uh, you can look up a, a paper by for, for example, uh, John Voigt. John Voigt, one of the organizers of this uh, program. So there is a finite list of division algebra. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. The, 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 this is finite, and the, and the uh, professor John uh, John Wood actually give the complete list of a genus less than or equal to two. So not not only zero, but also zero genus one, and genus two, all, all the possible. And uh, it's a finite list. It's a finite. Uh, yeah, yes, and uh, for every gen for any given genus, there's only finite finite number of uh uh Schumacher curve. Uh, yeah, because the, the genus uh, is uh, related to the volume of the schema curve, uh, uh, volume of the uh, fundamental domain. So, so you can uh, give the lower bound for the genus. So there, there's only one, uh, one only finitely many uh, schema curve for any given genus. And inside the division algebra, there are fi only finitely many yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. orders also. They have only finitely many gamma which contribute to genus zero and oh, yeah, given yeah. genus. Yeah, yeah, you can look up the list of by uh, Professor John Void. Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, uh, did you say that the CM points uh, were permuted by the Hecke operators? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, by which operator? No, the Hecke operators they permuted the CM points on the upper half uh, plane. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. Uh, so in general, so Hecke operator, for example, TP. Okay, so so there are several possibilities. Actually, three possibilities. So uh, suppose the CM endpoint has discrete D, then the uh, non P element can uh, the action with non P element can map this CM point discrete D to uh, discrete P squared D or discrete D or discrete D <laughs> over P squared. So there are three possibilities, but it, it, it's a it really depends on the P and the D. And do you need to fix the ambient uh, division algebra for doing this, or you don't need to fix that? Uh, we need to, we, uh, we, uh, so P and the D, so which case occurred depends on the uh, quantum algebra. Yeah. yeah, so given a quantum algebra, so, 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 go, so uh, according to the discipline of this quantum algebra there, and uh, you can determine that uh, you, the determination depends on the quantum algebra, the discriminant. So, so for example, in the, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Although the CM points can be defined without recourse to a quaternion algebra, CM points are points on the upper half plane for which uh, 
the uh, quadratic uh, they satisfy uh, they belong to quadratic imaginary field yeah yeah, yeah. and, and uh, but the discrete uh, that, that can, uh, how i define the uh, how we define the discrete same point uh, it depends on the how you embed the imaginary quartet algebra uh, imaginary, num imaginary number field into the quartet algebra so so the the discrete depends on the how you embed the the number field into quantum algebra. Also, of course, depends on all the the order in the quantum algebra. So, uh, so, so, so for example, uh, let me see. Uh, 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 maybe I mean, there uh, is you, a concept of a discriminant of a point on the upper half plane, which is. Uh, you look at the minimal polynomial uh, degree two. Uh, okay, it's not it's, it's not easier. It, it's not as simple as this. So, for, let, let's just take a classical module curve, for example. Uh, for example, the uh, okay for uh, for example root minus one i. Okay, if you consider this uh, as a point on uh, x zero one, then of course this uh, is a same point of discrete minus four. Okay, but if you consider this uh, as a point on for example, x zero two. Then this is actually a same point of this one minus sixteen, not minus four. It's, it it really depends on the all the the order you uh, you use to define the, the curve, and the, so because of the that that I'm uh, explain here. So the this one of this same point depends on uh the this embedding from uh, this phi from L into B uh, the determinant. The discriminant of this point depends on the this uh, embedding. So, so I, I mean that like uh, the exam example I mentioned earlier, the the point i, the root minus one. If you consider um, the point on x zero two, um, how do I say? I, I hope I can write something here. Uh, let me see if if I can write here. Uh, what's the yeah, uh, doesn't work this way. Uh, uh, no, so no, I understand. I mean, somehow you, you are saying that the discriminant of a point is related to the quaternion algebra in uh, which is used to define the CM point. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, actually, also in particular, this order O that you know, the different order, the same, even give the same point. Same point in the upper half, half plane. If we consider as a point on different stream, can have a different uh, discriminant. And so, so you cannot just look at the the, the minimal polynomial of this uh, the this point. You know, it really depends on the embedding. And similarly, the Hecke operators uses the division algebra. The uh, action of the the action of the Hecke operator on CM points also uses division algebra. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Action of the Hecke operators also depends uh, on which division algebra you choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because uh, uh, for for example, uh, uh, for example, one one condition is that P must. Uh, must not divide dn, right? So of course it, it depends on the quantum algebra, also the order. Uh, yeah, if, if it divides dn, then that, that's why we call again the evolution. Yeah, not not a Hick operator. Or you or you operator. I think for the classical module form case, you have a U operator and a T operator. Right. So if P divides the D and the O and then then we in the classical module form case, we have the U P operator instead of a T P operator. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other questions? All right. So, if uh, nothing else, uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Uh, Thank you much. Uh, apologize yeah. for, for delaying the talk. Uh, I, yeah, I'm... No, but uh, you know, it's the Zoom technology. Sometimes uh, it's not very friendly to mathematicians. Okay, good. So I think uh, 